What's going on here, guys? Um, I figured I'd give a quick demonstration of the over-unity capacitor dump circuit via wireless power, the plates. So I've got two halogen bulbs being capped on pulsed here every 8 seconds. And they consume about 53 watts. Our input doesn't exceed 45 watts. And our output will be... 53 to 60 depending on how long I run those bulbs so we can just see the uh, absolute over unity effect occurring so input output we have output spikes that far exceed the input. So you're seeing it right here. input output the output pulses exceed the input in wattage we have an over unity output pulse that we dump through our capacitors that receive wireless high frequency power I'll try and move this a little bit closer for you all to see again input output and I could if I cooked up another bowl in parallel I could get that to 70 watts input wattage output wattage boom there's that pulse So feel free to pause the video when that timer circuit fires. And again, what's occurring? Our wireless power gets captured through a bridge rectifier from all this aluminum. It gets captured into the, this big capacitor bank, very dangerous. Goes through this reduction module, steps it down from 110 volts DC to 15 volts DC. That charge gets stored a bit in this little buffer cap, just so the module won't shut off. Uh, then we dump it with a timer circuit into the load. And we use this to also recharge 12 volt batteries or super caps that then power up a 120 volt AC inverter to temporarily run anything we want for a short time. And the input of this can also recharge the system. So you're seeing it right here, our output is exceeding our input when we use pulse power our output is clearly higher than the input when we when the pulses fire it cannot be denied you see that we had a 61 watt spike for a moment And keep in mind, when that is firing, we have no degradation on our wireless power. No degradation at all. So I'm proving the over-unity pulse, and I'm proving there's no degradation in the wireless power. We're not impeding the signal or draining it in any way. And, um... We also have this little wireless light still capable of lighting. Right here, this little wireless LED. Looks dim when those halogens fire.
So very promising. The key is making your cap bank, which is the storage, to be big enough. Because the high frequency will rapidly recharge the uh, the cap bank, which acts as storage. And for those who doubt this, I will shut the input off. And our charge will dissipate and the system will turn completely off. And we're dead. And we have no more wireless power because the system is off. Off. No more wireless power. So none of the trolls can say I'm faking it or tricking it somehow. Again, I'll turn our input back on. And we begin to charge up that cap bank. We see it very rapidly recharging. So what happens when I turn the transmitter on, the wireless power gets collected on these aluminum plates that are insulated with foil. Those plates are in parallel. The output goes to a full bridge rectifier, the AC side. The other AC side of the rectifier goes to the 80 volt positive rail of the uh, boost converter that's powering up the transmitter. And we have a 110 volt DC output here at about 1 or 2 amps, continuous, and it's very dangerous. And we're at 124 volt input now. I'm going to turn this on, and which will activate the timer circuit, and again, it'll start triggering. And the thing that's dangerous is these are kind of exposed. If you touch that, it would, it would screw you up bad. And again, here's the overunity pulse. I might add a third bulb to that and add another video later on. It'll probably peak at a 70 watt pulse output. And as you see, the high frequency rapidly recharges our uh, our capacitors. That's our capacitors rapidly recharging. So 40 watt input, 54 watt output. You can see the overunity that occurs in pulses. Undeniable. And when that overunity occurs, we still have unimpeded wireless power. God damn, that's bright. It's like a camera flash, but lasts a little longer. And it's very bright and kind of disorienting. I'm going to back up a bit, and you can see just how bright that is. Like that that's bright. I'm gonna shut off my light too. Like that 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 hurts to look at. So, clear demonstration of pulsed over unity via the decoupling effect. And we still have phenomenal wireless power accumulation in uh, random distant metal objects. Here we go. Unimpeded wireless power as well. If I can contact it, there we go. As you see, very interesting. Fifty three watt output, forty five watt input, forty four watt input. can clearly see the uh, over unity I want the light to uh, affect the screen so we can see the over unity that occurs in pulses and again I'll shut the system off we are off we will lose our charge.
and it's dead. Because those caps dissipate their charge pretty quick. Um, for those who don't know, DC super caps power up a 0 to 120 volt DC buck converter board. We have fine control over the current and voltage. Powers up the transmitter. Transmitter runs off of anywhere from 0 to 120 volts DC. Low current. We generate wireless power very efficiently. That wireless power collects on the insulated metal plates. The insulated metal plates are all connected in parallel with the wire. That wire goes to the AC side of a full bridge rectifier made out of fast switching SR560 Scotty diodes. The other end of the AC rectifier goes to the positive 80 volt output rail of the um, buck converter. And I don't know why that works so well, but it does. And at this rectifier output, we will get 110 volts DC at about 1 or 2 amps, depending on how you adjust the plates. And the high frequency will rapidly recharge this cap storage bank, which I am going to make bigger. So we take that 110 volts DC, power up a DC reduction board. It goes from 110 volts DC to 12 or 15 volts DC at about anywhere from 5 to 10 amps I can control it so and then it goes through the timer circuit so we're pulsing 12 or 15 volts at 5 or 6 amps to run the load or recharge super, other super caps our batteries that then would power up an inverter to run your AC loads and you're off running <clears throat> and it can also be used to recharge the system and keep it going indefinitely um, the key is your storage and the super caps the tuning distance of the plates and um, yeah what's occurring is the insulated metal plates attract more of an environmental charge like some kind of collector pump once the system is activated so you saw it here being demonstrated that we have an over unity pulse of wireless power input output so again I'll turn it on I turned it on. Our wireless light is lit. I love this little thing. It's my new favorite. I'm kind of using this to demonstrate the fact the system is highly non-linear. And it might even be scalar because this is lit behind an insulated metal plate here. Like the signal should be blocked at the power levels I'm working with. So the signal seems to permeate solid matter. I could be wrong on that. There could be something else at play that I don't quite understand yet, but that is interesting nevertheless. And again, system off, wireless light goes out, system on. So there can be there can be no doubt this is the input board driving the transmitter. Power consumption is a little on the high side because of the, the way the plates are oriented. We're absorbing a lot of that power. Again, I'll turn the system on. We're at about 130 volt input. Once the caps charge, and you go past 100 volts, the timer resets and doesn't show the one. I don't know why. On. There we go. So our caps rapidly recharge. Dump in a pulse. There's the over unity. Caps recharge. Dump in a pulse. There's the undeniable over unity. So this video will probably make a lot of physicists cry and uh, re-question things because the pulse is clearly over unity and I'm demonstrating that. Like there can be absolutely no doubt. And I will probably add a video, a video later where I connect a third bulb to these guys and show it lighting. So keep in mind while that's doing that, that over unity pulse. I still have phenomenal wireless power output on strange things too. I'll let that sink in. Unimpeded wireless power as well. We can duplicate the signal without dampening it if we have the correct technique. Even on these uh these super caps that just sit here. How unique is that? The 
certain hot spots where the energy seems to accumulate. It'll even light on the battery terminal here, which is very interesting. Probably just because there's plates in the battery which act as a receiver. Oh wow, look at that. It loves that. And again, we duplicated the signal just from the battery chemistry. The radiant energy stimulates the release of more energy from different electrochemical setups, battery setups, and insulated plate setups. So here's your simple over unity. Bet you I can get this to light um, just pretty powerfully just by connecting a lead, one wire lead to a battery. Another lead just dangling off and will probably light. Um, so here's this will really impress people. Now keep in mind, I didn't even ground that yet. If I ground this lead, it'll get brighter. I'm gonna connect this to the desk, matter of fact. I can make good contact. Huh, having trouble doing it. Oh well, it's gonna have to be the way it is then. But either way, that's still lit, pretty impressive. The battery, the plates in the battery are acting as a receiver for the wireless power. How impressive is that? And we still got that guy going. And we have our over unity pulse. Clearly over unity. Can't deny that, man. I'll let you. I'll film that and let that sink in. And to add the icing on the cake. I think I'll add a fluorescent tube. Here's the icing on the cake. Fluorescent tube lit. Over Unity wireless power incandescent bulbs being pulse lit. And this guy lit. No degradation when the uh, incandescent bulbs fire. Zero degradation in that. Look at that. Unimpeded wireless power. Zero degradation. Bulbs fire, we can see the light, zero degradation. This type of energy is a very free form of energy. And again, here's our over unity pulse. Boom, 53 out, 43 watt in at most, maybe 44. And 55 out on that one, so we're clearly over unity in the pulse. And again, I will shut it off. Everything will go out. I'll get this in view. Everything is out. So, and that's just the last charge draining in this in the big caps. I don't imagine that will go another time. And if it does, it'll be very quick. Yeah, it's dead now. So. That's that. Remaining charge in our system is 13.1 volts. When in resonance, it's highly efficient. So that's that. And yeah, take care, guys. I feel like I demonstrated more of a breakthrough. So take care and more to come.